Hello everyone, this is KK6 Foxtrot Uniform Tango with another project. Uh, I thought I'd uh, show off a board that a friend of mine lent me. This is a Outernet Dreamcatcher version 2.03. Uh, Outernet is a project uh, intended to uh, downlink satellite information to anyone anywhere in the world. And uh, they built some hardware out of that. Uh, this is uh, that piece of hardware, which uh, if uh, you take a look here, is a board with a CPU on it. Um, and this is a, a fairly uh, well-equipped uh, uh, single board computer. And attached to that is a integrated uh, set of chips for, uh, for processing the signals. Um, for those who've played with the RTL SDR card, uh, that's essentially the RTL SDR embedded on the same board. And then they also have an antenna connected here. This is an L-band antenna. And if you look at the, the front of it, anyone who's ever seen a GPS antenna, that sure looks like a GPS antenna to me. Anyway, uh, that, is, uh, that is the setup. Now, uh, this has two pieces of software that can run on it. One is something called um, Skylark. And uh, that is the original software that these guys built for downloading satellite information. And I'll show some of that. And they are moving to something called uh, Armbian. They've got an Armbian version, which they're uh, not yet decoding satellite signals, but I suppose the intent is to do that. Now, if you will uh, take a look at their project page, uh, I think they're in the midst of some flux and some transition. Uh, I think they're, they're uh, probably tired of paying for a lot of satellite time, uh, but I'll show that off in their Sky Skylark software later. But, and, and they're really pitching this as a board with an integrated SDR on it. So anyway, uh, you'll have to talk to them about what the status of their project is, but this is their hardware. So this is a, a, a image of their Skylark software uh, running on, uh, being accessed by a web browser on a PC. I apologize because I'm outside and the light's kind of bright today, but anyway. Um, so, so what this looks like is that board, which you saw earlier, when it's running Skylock, presents a uh, a Wi-Fi access point that's called OuterNet, and I've I've uh, logged into that Wi-Fi access point, and if you go then to uh, OuterNet, that is HTTP colon slash slash OuterNet, it resolves to the board, and you get this, and the uh, you can log in, and I'm currently logged in as OuterNet with the password of OuterNet, which lets me control things. So let's uh, see what we can see here. This is their menu, and uh, and I apologize for the glare. This gives you a whole bunch of applications. So there's About, Skylark, Calculator, File Manager, Log Viewer, Messages, Network, News, Preview, Reader, TextPad, Tuner, Weather, What's New, and Wikipedia. And so this is their Skylark software. The intent, I believe, was to allow anyone anywhere, even if they had no broadband or any other internet access, to get information. Um, and that's all through um, satellites. I guess they started with KU band satellites, which are very big satellite dishes. Then they moved to L band satellite dishes, uh, satellites, which are like Inmarsat. Um, and I'm not sure what they're doing next. And so right now this is the Inmarsat, pointing at Inmarsat. I don't know which Inmarsat uh, satellite this is, but it's uh, almost due south when you're in, um, in North America. And uh, it is the frequency that they're downlinking on is 15.39.8725. And we can see what the status is here. And uh, this is just having that satellite um, satellite dish uh, pointed roughly to, the, roughly to the south here. And this is the signal to noise ratio. I guess you need to have it better than uh, 3.0. And obviously it looks like it's doing pretty well today. Somewhere between 10 and 11. Uh, this tells you whether it's locked and a whole bunch of other information, as well as how many packets have been sent or received by the, uh, by the uh, outer net. So if you have this running, every so often uh, data comes down. The way you figure out uh, what's come down is you go to what's new, and it should tell you all the recent files and information that have been downloaded. Now, it always takes a little while. Okay, here we go. So uh, here it shows the log of files, the date, the time, and the file. Uh, the file I was downloaded, and uh, here it's showing that uh, there's a bunch of APRS messages that were downloaded in a batch, um, and they're right now piping uh, some APRS messages from the International Space Station to this satellite, and then a lot of news, and this is all news from 
uh, from various online news sources. So let's close this window if I can find my cursor and take a look. So uh, for example, you look at this and if you look at messages, that's the APRS messages they're, they're transmitting. And it takes a while for that to load. So uh, here's, uh, here's all the APRS messages. Now, uh, if you've ever used APRS, you know it's a lot of traffic. And it looks to me like they only are sending a tiny little bit of traffic from uh, wherever they are to, um, to this satellite. And if you look at, the, uh, look at the call they've got there, WB4APR, which is apparently related to this project in some way, um, and they're sending a fraction of the traffic that I was able to see on APRS.FI. So I'm not sure what their decision on that is, but it's probably very expensive to be sending uh, a lot of data. So but one thing that they have been continuing to do um, in sending is the weather, and they put a satellite uh, image up of, of the current weather conditions, um, and they allow you to filter that in, in a very nice graphical interface. And bumping everything here. So this is an example of the weather. Now, um, I've noticed that they're only downloading uh, weather information about uh, once, once a day. So I don't know how useful it is. It's very beautiful, but <laughs> it, uh, it does give you an idea of what's going on. And you, they've got an interface to be able to, to steer to anywhere on the Earth. And you can even change, it, change the, kind of, uh, the kind of weather uh, display that you have here. Um, so there's a little bit more information. It's kind of hard to see again on this screen. Let's see if that works better. And you can see uh, you can see the wind, the temperature, humidity, and uh, various other overlays that they have on here. So I've had this running for about three days now, and the kind of information that's coming down from the from the uh, from the satellite is a bunch of uh, news. This is uh, uh, Voice of America's Africa. Uh, this is Al Jazeera. Um, there's a lot of other stuff. So mostly world news, and uh, so that is uh, that is the news. Uh, information that's coming down here and that looks like to me it seems like that's the bulk of the information coming down on their feeds right now um, on their packets. Another area that they've been downloading information they download information is they'll put in information articles uh, from Wikipedia and they uh, slowly accumulate articles from Wikipedia and uh, um, kind of random very random uh, subjects I'm not sure how they pick what comes up here but it uh, looks like uh, information about Steve Jobs showed up and there and there's a little uh actually looks like they even sent down a photo of Steve Jobs so that's actually coming down um uh along uh on on their satellite feeds so i thought i'd go over uh some of the pieces of this uh hardware real quick it has uh three usb ports uh you'll see one there's a wi-fi card attached uh this is actually a usb wi-fi uh, connected. There's no Wi-Fi built onto this board um, and no Ethernet, so you've got to pick one or the other or both. Um, I don't believe the uh, OuterNet software works on a normal Ethernet network, but I haven't played with that yet. Um, I do know the Arnbium image will load up and you can put that on any network. Um, it's powered by a USB port here. This is a USB port that just, uh, uh, you know, standard uh, 5 volt uh, USB, and I've got it to a little power adapter off screen and um, there is uh, another port another USB port for uh, USB OTG I guess you can load uh, and monitor things there uh, in addition on this board there right here is a, uh, a, a pin headers that is for a serial port uh, I did find that this will not boot when the serial ports attached and I don't know what the issue is there and haven't debugged it uh, I was able to boot and then it would hang because of the serial port uh, switching modes um, uh, these two connectors are RF connectors, and um, 
I believe this is uh, this connector is the one which is the bypass port and also for an active antenna. And this one ha goes to an onboard uh, LNB, and I believe that's somewhere over in this corner here. Um, so if you had a um, a passive antenna uh, for for uh, your satellite connection, you'd use the top one, not the lower one. And that's the lower one. Uh, there are two um, there are two uh, uh, MMC uh, SD card. Uh, ports, one supposedly for data and the other one's for the, the boot image. I found out you can boot from either. Um, so, uh, and then uh, uh, there's a speaker speaker uh, port there as well. So um, I've been able to run uh, uh, plenty of the RTL SDR software on here and also the, uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, this uh, outer net software. So anyway, that's a quick overlook of this uh, Dreamcatcher board which a friend of mine uh, lent to me and thought I'd just show it off to everyone else.